Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love each and every day. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's at least our aim, mission, and goal. We got uh, Nick Shipkowski on the line from fightingirishwire.usatoday.com. Just check out the banner right there and follow him right there for some great content on Notre Dame football coverage. One year probation. So I was on here live taking calls and suddenly the news came down about a one year probation for Notre Dame. So suddenly people think that the sky's falling in, but uh, it's certainly just uh, in regards to, and you can certainly expand on this, uh, just uh, Todd Light would be the name that's recognizable to college football fans that was involved and uh, run down just um, what happened and what has been taken away from Notre Dame. It, it, it revolves around recruiting and, and, and official visits. Yeah, and it is. It actually was. They were visiting. Todd Light was the defensive backs coach a couple of years ago, uh, was replaced ahead of the 2020 season this year. He left on his own doing, um, went to actually, I believe it was to either coach or just to live closer to his son's high school to be more active in that. What he was doing was he showed up before a prospect's Um, Before the July 1st date of that prospect's junior year of high school showed up and that's what ended up being punished for Notre Dame in in that sense. And they joined the ranks of Texas A&M and Florida, who were both after the same player, then ended up going to Washington in those efforts and Notre Dame gets punished for it. And the other part of it, the second side of that was that he had sent text messages, 10 or so text messages, or at least 10 text exchanges to another prospect from Ohio that was sent before you were supposed to be able to text a player in the writing of the rules in order to sell your program to him, sell sell whatever you're trying to sell to him. He sent those too early as well. And so they were seen as a, as a problem in the eyes of the NCAA. And the final, and I think most interesting and most ridiculous part of all of this is that that player from Ohio one of his teammates wanted to have a picture with Brian Kelly because, oh, my God, Notre Dame's football coach is at the school. I like football. That's a pretty cool thing. Can I get a picture? And Brian Kelly said, no, it's against the rules. And the kid asked again. He's like, all right, well, I don't want to be a bad guy. I'll take a picture with you. And that gets written up. Like, okay, I can understand the other parts. I can get, okay, you're breaking the rules. You're guilty of that. But the fact that that's a rule, that a player can't take a picture, even if he's being recruited or not, I think is just laughable. You have the North Carolina situations. You have a lot bigger fish to fry if you're the NCAA. And not just that that is a rule, but you actually enforce that and go out of your way to reference that. I think it's laughable. Oh, so you're actually thinking that changing players' uh, grades in the classroom would be more <laughs> important than a coach taking a picture with a with a high school, uh, you know, school. You, the college educations that they pride themselves on these players getting, maybe they should actually get something out of those educations. I, just an idea, just a thought. Maybe I'm crazy. And to your point, Nick, if you want to make it a rule because you can see this getting out of hand or uh, coaches capitalizing on their celebrity or whatever you want to say, you know, make it a rule. And then if it's violated, just say, you know what? We're going to give you a little bit of a warning. We don't want you doing things like that. And then just let it go. And it's probably not going to happen again. Uh, but to, to include that and, and, and put that in the whole uh, part of the violation seems a bit ridiculous as well.